today i'm going to be sharing with you guys the five marches that i used in my most recent kvk where we actually were able to pull out the victory what's going on guys cheers so in my last video i talked about how we actually won our latest heroic anthem power up kvk but in that video i didn't talk about which marches i used so today that's what we're going to be covering we'll talk about the commanders that i used the support skills that i put on them their talent builds and the equipment and then after that i'm going to give you guys some insight as to what direction i'm taking my account and what things i'm looking forward to in the future that i'm starting to plan for right now so that way you guys can be prepared as well okay without further ado the first march that i used primarily in this kvk is my guanyu primary with my cpo secondary i feel like this is the best open field march in the entire game right now both of these commanders have absolutely insane aoe damage you also get the silent debuff from Guan Yu. you get the health debuff from cpo you're also gaining a ton of attack stats from not only guan but also cpo as well both of them have march speed and there's just the list goes on there's synergy here with the silence effect from Guan Yu, giving you more rage from cpo it's just an insanely good combo and this is absolutely one that you should be building even if you're not an infant entry player it's just so good now as you can see my Guan Yu is not expertise it's definitely something that I am considering because there are so many shields in the open field now that I, just the probability that I would get this 15 percent extra skill damage is very high but that's something that I'm going to think about probably after the next set of commanders comes out because I do want to see what they are and we'll talk about that in a little bit later in the video so stay tuned until then this is the equipment that I have on my Guan as you can see here it is full legendary everything we have have the talent on the hope cloak we also have the iconic crystals put into said hope cloak and the concealed dagger as well as the ring of doom the concealed dagger I think is important because this is applying a really nice health debuff to the target and this is something that you want to last as long as possible what I mean by this is that you want this on either your most powerful March or on at least a March that is very tanky or one that's not going to be targeted as much in the open field because unlike the horn of fury or the ring of doom this is applying a debuff to the enemy so this actually gives a benefit to everybody hitting that target so all of your other marches are benefiting from the concealed dagger all of your allies are benefiting from your concealed dagger if they're hitting the same target as you so this is one that provides a lot more utility than something like the ring of doom or horn of fury because it benefits every army hitting that player so you want it to last as long as possible also obviously the ring of doom for me is a pretty much a, a no-brainer here um a 50 increased damage on the right turn is just absolutely devastating on this combination because there's so much skill damage here on top of that i think the most important piece is to replace for infantry players when you're going from epic to legendary are the chest and the head uh these two on the epic set are basically all uh attack points which we already have a ton of attack not only in the kvk tech but also in the skills of these two commanders so you absolutely do not want any attack gear on your on your infantry at this point plus i also have the gloves to give me that nice little set bonus of an extra three percent troop defense which is nice still rocking the blue gatekeeper shield i think the ten and a half percent of health is exceptionally good and i think the legendary weapons for infantry are a bit overrated at this point eventually down the line i'm going to have to craft it because there's going to be so many iconic crystals in the game that i'll need to do that but until that point i think the uh the blue shield is just this is in my opinion the best blue piece of equipment in the entire game by a long shot now as for the support skills on my Guan Yu and CPO I used oblique tactics from Belisarius this is one of the best support skills in the entire game because when the target is below 50 percent you're just straight up getting 25 percent extra damage and in especially in the power up game mode there's going to be so many instances where players are getting swarmed in the open field and you're going to hit that 50 percent mark really quickly if you can't retreat and again because of the blockade feature there's a lot of times in this game mode where you can't retreat so getting below 50 is definitely something that happens more often in this kvk game mode than in other ones where usually you want to run away under like under i would say 70 or 60 percent in this game mode you can't so this is one of the best support skills in my opinion also it's going to be available to all of you so even if you're free to play you're going to have an expertise belisarius it's just something that everyone has which is exceptionally good i also have the support skill for isun sin uh, this just gives me 30 percent extra defense straight up this is exceptionally good especially for a march that definitely needs as much tankiness as it can get it does get a little bit of tankiness from cpo but you get absolutely none from guan yu 
so just straight up 30 percent more defense is very good and when you do end up getting low you just deal 20 percent increased damage so as you can see here both of these skills are focused on all damage that's what i want for this march i want as many instances as possible where i'm dealing extra damage because it's just it's the best march i have with the best equipment and i think these were the best support skills for them for my talent build this is what i have on my guan yu obviously rejuvenate is needed clarity is very good because you're going to be dealing a ton of skill damage with cpo so like absolutely you want this for sure buckler shield i've always said is one of the best uh talents that you can easily grab if your commander has the conquering tree because you're just straight up reducing nine percent counterattack damage is very good i grabbed hold the line up here this is good for a little bit of tankiness for two seconds we also love the infantry health that you can grab over here on strong body plus the one point you get off to the right here and i grabbed the uh extra march speed here for infantry because you just you need it it's just Guan Yu feels really slow without his expertise and uh it's just something that's required also these two skills undying fury is a no-brainer but also with the number of nevsky's williams zang Yu's that you see there's going to be a ton of opportunities to get extra damage on cavalry here so you you're definitely going to want iron spear as well next let's move on to my second army this is my cavalry army this is my nevsky primary with my william secondary nevsky at this point is basically a must-have in season of conquest he just deals so much damage he's basically saladin 2.0 okay he's got a little bit of tankiness he gives you some extra health but he's dealing a ton of single target damage while also adding a debuff to them as well he's super super good you basically need him and then the William gives you a little bit of AoE damage which is very nice in the open fields you can see my William is five 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 one so I do have a value build here um I will say that at this point I'm looking more and more at expertising William for the extra 10 percent defense that you get for the fourth skill because this March I noticed does feel a little bit uh frail which is which is a little upsetting for me because I did go all in on Nevsky hoping that he would be uh tanky like I would expect him to be unfortunately he doesn't feel as tanky as I want him to be and I don't know if that's because um I don't have that extra 20 percent health on the uh, when I'm in Alliance territory I was I wasn't honestly paying attention to that as much uh, later in KVK I probably should have played with the idea of using a Nevsky and Saladin I would probably do Saladin primary Nevsky secondary if that if I did decide to do this and I think I will play with this combination next KVK just just for full clarity this the problem with this with losing William is it's a very selfish March okay this is very selfish you're only dealing single target damage you're only focusing basically on your own trades and that's pretty much it anyway you're here for what I am using not what I'm speculating on so this is the equipment that I have on my Nevsky as you can see here I do still have the blue helmet that's only eight percent of Cavalry defense and I definitely would like to have the Cavalry helmet here of the set piece because that does give you a little bit more defense Defense. the problem is it just it's it, it wasn't a priority right the blue helmet with the talent is okay it's definitely one of the last pieces I would replace if I were you for Cavalry and the purple helmet is just not that interesting for Cavalry I think I even I got rid of it at this point honestly but the rest of the equipment here I'm actually pretty happy with uh, I have 11% Cavalry health on the chest 8% cavalry health on the gloves. We have seven and a half percent cavalry health on the boots. And because I have the set chest and boots, I get an extra 3% cavalry health from that, which is incredibly good on top of that. 10 and a half percent cavalry health on the legs and we have 17 percent cavalry defense with heart of the saint so as you can see here this is full health and defense build i have zero attack on this cavalry march and that's because well there's the kvk tech and honestly you're just gonna have more cavalry attack in general so i built the entire set to be tanky which again is why i was kind of concerned as to why it didn't feel that tanky in the open fields as you can see i am using the horn of fury on my nevsky and that's because i do want as much rage on this combination as possible i do have the skill tree but that's not enough i want to pop off the active skills a ton with nevsky because it's only single target so if i'm only going to be hitting one thing i want to hit it like a truck and i want to hit it over and over and over again on top of that you want the active skill from william to go off because that's the aoe and i just felt like this was the best combination to put 
my horn of fury on we're going to talk about a way that i probably could have tweaked that a little bit in just a second when we get to my next march um i also have the talented silent trial i actually love the silent trial and to my in my opinion silent trial is the best epic accessory honestly it's it's so good if you guys don't know how rage works in this game there is a cap of i believe it's 220 rage per turn and after that cap is reached then the silent trial debuff is applied so even if the enemy has like a ton of different buffs in the open field they have williams they have horn of furies they have all these ways of getting extra rage Rage, it's not going to matter because silent trial is going to be calculated after all of that extra rage is gained so this is a great debuff to apply to your enemy and i just think that if you're using epic equipment silent trial is the way to go that's not to say that delane's amulet is bad i just think that silent trial is probably the best especially because there's so many ways to gain rage in this game and there's very few ways to take away enemy rage so this is a great great choice as for support skills on this combo i did put the sun Tzu skill of 20 percent extra skill damage again that's because Nevsky hits like a truck and we do have the AOE on William which is nice so this is a pretty high skill damage March obviously you know more AOE would have been better for this specific support skill but regardless I think this is very good use for Sun Tzu skill we also threw Martel's counter attack on here uh and this was because again I felt that this March was getting targeted more than anything because they see the Nevsky they want it dead uh and so I think putting the extra counter attack damage on there is something that I felt was necessary I was also testing out the Cao Cao support skill for this March for a while uh, and I just felt like it wasn't that great it just didn't feel like it was adding to my sustain that much so I figured okay might as well just focus on damage then taking a look at the talents on my Nevsky obviously we grabbed rejuvenate over here we also grabbed the tactical mastery because there's skill damage on both these commanders that you want to elevate you also want to take less skill damage so that makes sense you can see I threw two points into health of all troops just because I had two points left over and the versatility tree really kind of sucks okay I also came up here to rally and cry now for a while I kind of brushed off rally and cry as like a garbage talent because it's only for 10 seconds right and you're going to be fighting for a long time but the reality is that you're going to be entering and leaving battles way more often than you think you're going to be attacking a target and one of the two of you if you're paying attention whoever's losing is going to retreat right so either you're going to try to retreat from that encounter or the enemy's going to try to retreat from that encounter uh and if that encounter breaks then rally and cry has the opportunity to pop off again so if they run away and then you start to catch and hit somebody else that's really good rally and cry is also a good opportunity for you to switch targets multiple times uh when you're open field fighting so honestly i think rally and cry is not as bad as uh, people used to say it is obviously we grab undying fury for the extra rage and i had one point to just throw in equestrian excellence now you could obviously make the argument that i should take away this one point of health and put the other two points here but i I, I don't know I just a question excellence is like it's a conditional March speed buff like if you're gonna give me March speed I want March speed all the time I don't want it based on a chance from a normal attack like if I'm hitting you with a normal attack I don't even have to catch you I'm I already got you boys I already got you so I don't know I don't really love this but I had one point left over so I figured I would throw it in there that brings us to my third army that I was using this KBK and that is Nebu primary with YSG secondary and this is the combo that I was least confident in honestly um it is insane AoE damage in the open field obviously this is the best uh Archer March that I could build at this time and unfortunately I didn't have enough blueprints or materials when KBK started to put legendary gear on this combination so there's a lot of opportunity here and we're going to talk about that next my Archer March is the one that I'm going to be upgrading after this KBK so we'll talk about that in a minute as you can see my Nebu is 5515 I was very happy to get this combination I saved a ton of sculptures because you don't really need the expertise obviously the extra damage factor is very very nice for the skill damage here but realistically as a budget build this is very good my account is focused mainly on infantry so having a budget build for uh archers as powerful as this uh, is great great value obviously YSG is expertise the skill damage on this guy is absolute bonkers plus the 50 percent extra skill damage that you get from YSG applying to the crazy skill damage you deal on Nebu is insanely good you also are gaining extra 15 percent all damage what the heck is that dude that is actually crazy you're also getting that rage reduction by 100 on nebu as well um i really like nebu as a 
high damage slightly slightly tanky commander he gains that 30 percent increased defense and the march speed that you desperately need on your uh on your archer march to be honest with you but this combo honestly is a staple archer march if you guys are looking for a value march for your ysg that you expertised two years ago this is probably a good way to go or if you don't have nebu you can go for Boudica. we'll talk about her later because obviously i don't have her expertise just yet as for equipment like i said i have no legendaries on this set yet i will be crafting the legendary chest and gloves for this set um that's going to be the focus primarily for my archer march the reason that i focused on making legendaries for archers last is because archers already have set bonuses for epics and that's not something that can be said for infantry or for cavalry i don't know why Lilith decided to give archers an epic set uh but they did and so you gain six percent extra stats by having this revival set which I think is really cool unfortunately the chest and the gloves are giving you attack and really you need a little bit more tankiness now I did put Mora's web on Nebu and I don't think that this is a great strategy honestly Mora's web is just like the dagger where you probably want to put this on either a really fast march so you can catch them with the slowdown or you want to put it on a more tanky march right you want to put this on a march that's going to last for a long time because again unlike some of the other uh accessories that you have here this is applying a debuff to an enemy meaning everyone gets that benefit when they're hitting that target and that's just better than buffing only your army i did put the call of the loyal on here with the archer talent just to get him the extra six and a half percent march speed i didn't really have anything else here honestly um but the march speed is definitely something that i felt that this combination needed uh so it is what it is obviously if i had a better accessory i would have put it here but i just simply didn't as for support skills um we actually had two archer specific support skills in this kvk so i just threw those on my archer set i did get the extra 20 percent of stats from the kiera bastion which is nice and i gained 10 percent extra health and 10 percent march speed just by having the edward of woodstock skill unlocked which was pretty cool it was an extra 10 percent of health that i got just for free so yes that's great and if you did invest in edward you got 30 percent health from this which was just that would have been really good for this march unfortunately it's just not worth the sculptures to get a bastion skill Taking a look at my talent tree for Nebu, you can see here similar things for my other skill damage commanders. Grabbing Rejuvenate here makes a lot of sense. Tactical Mastery and Heraldic Shield makes a lot of sense as well. We love Buckler Shield. I didn't have enough points, unfortunately, to go all three in there, and I just didn't know what to take away from. We grab Razor Sharp for the extra rage, which we absolutely want, and I came all the way to the top here for Whistling Arrows. I just think all damage for two seconds is pretty good and this doesn't say that there's a cooldown now I know it's only a 10 percent chance but if there's really no cooldown on this like that's awesome there might be an opportunity to optimize this a little bit better but I think that this gets really the core of what you want from the skill tree while just going all in for archer stats finally that brings us to our fourth March and alternatively our fifth March as well because in this kvk I really only ran with four marches at any given time because I felt like those were just the four best marches that I had and putting out a fifth March that has less like suboptimal gear and not great support skills and like with your leftover troops you know t4s and stuff like that uh and not your best commanders that's just a really good way to fill your hospital faster so if you don't have five insanely good equipment sets then uh, you probably shouldn't be running around with five marches in kvk especially when you have troop expansions going on and things like that uh and you have the buffs from the kvk tech that give you more troops per army like if you're going to be running around with like over 300,000 troops right this is I have 270,000 on this march and that's without a troop expansion so imagine how many troops I could put in a single army uh, it's like why would I split that up amongst five suboptimal marches when I could put a ton of troops into four better marches so realistically I used four marches most of kvk uh the first one that I was using around pass four was herald primary with alexander secondary now this is a really good combination and I I know uh, other content creators have talked about this combo a lot I really love Harold primary here because of the skill tree um Harold on his fourth skill gives you a 20 percent chance to just pop his active skill for free and every time you do that rejuvenate on the support skill for Harold is going to be activated which gives you 60 rage you're dealing nice damage with Harold here you're really trying to just dissuade them from swarming you because Alex can't really take the swarms you are getting the shields which are nice you're getting the single target damage here which is also really nice you can't take 
take the damage reduction uh, debuffs which we love you're also getting a lot of attack here um from Alex which is just adding to the damage that Harold is outputting because he himself also gives you a lot of infantry attack so you can see that there's a lot to love about this combination here plus Alex is giving your other armies some uh, mini shields which I really like about Alex he adds that little bit of support element and he makes the enemies take 30 percent increase damage for four seconds which is a very powerful debuff to be applying and definitely something you want in the open field which is why I think Alex he just does so much in the open field adding to your damage output as well as supporting your allies and your other marches uh that even though Alex is very old I feel like he's just so he, he has so much benefit in the open field that you basically still need to bring in Alex uh and I will talk about later one reason why I didn't use Alex but that's uh sort of a, a different scenario talking about the equipment on my Herald this is more of a budget version of what I have on my Guan Yu okay I just have two pieces of legendary I was lucky enough to get the talent on the hope cloak for free we still have the blue shield you see here I gave into stratagems to uh Herald with the infantry talent um the extra troops just help with the counter attack damage uh and you know making a little bit harder to swarm him down or at least making it a little bit more punishing to swarm him down when they do it eventually try to do that the Delane's amulet here is just to reduce the counter attack damage you're taking when you are swarmed uh, because that is something that will be happening to your Herald most likely at some point especially if you're losing the open field traits for support skills here I did give him the Joan of Arc support skill I think the normal attack damage is very powerful and if you guys didn't know um the Joan of Arc skill increases not only your normal attack damage but also your counter attack damage as well so it's sort of like an extra Martel support skill which I think is very good and then I also gave them the Richard support skill this just gives them an extra 30 percent of stats which is desperately needed mainly that defense is what I was looking for on this support skill and I just think that this is a very solid set for an infantry pair that's going to be dealing as much damage as possible while trying to mitigate the damage that you take back this is the talent build that I was using on my Herald you can see here I grabbed rejuvenate that is a no-brainer you need this for pretty much anybody who uses the skill tree even though Alex doesn't really have skill damage on his active skill you still want tactical mastery because you're just gonna be you'll see the amount of axes flying with Herald is insane so you definitely want that you also take heraldic shield and you grab buckler shield as well this is just a no-brainer I didn't grab clarity here because again there's no skill damage on Alex now you could make the argument here that you're gonna get clarity every time Herald pops an active skill which we already discussed is a lot so I may want to come back and revisit this just because you're you're gonna get it all the time and it's a six second buff so it's going to constantly be going off but I decided instead to opt for the extra stats here because again Harold is a commander that you use when you're getting swarmed more and just more stats is better when you're getting swarmed as opposed to the extra skill damage that you could be dealing that was kind of my theory there I grabbed the one point of health here and the six percent of health over there very good stuff and uh the the extra March speed here is decent regardless now the reason that I said fourth and fifth March is because later in the KVK I actually did replace Alex with Martel and the reason that I did this was because there were it felt like there were a lot of instances where with the blockade feature and the just number of enemies that I was encountering it made it really hard to move around in the open field I constantly felt like I was getting stuck and I figured okay if I'm gonna keep getting stuck here and I have no choice but to get surrounded I might as well try to punish them as much as possible with my Charles Martel okay so this is basically a budget version of Pakal Herald uh, I talked about this in my Martel video if you missed that go ahead and check it out if you are concerned if Martel is still good or not I think he is I used the same support skills here and obviously it's the same talent build on Herald the same equipment on Herald but it's definitely more tanky even with having Martel as secondary now I know a lot of people like to do Martel primary Herald secondary and I think that that might be slightly more tanky but you lose out on rejuvenate from the skill tree and I think that is just so crucial for Harold uh, because you're going to get it so often that you're losing a huge rage engine and without that rage engine you're going to be popping less shield on Martel you're going to be popping less active skills on Harold and that's just not really what you want because the shield on Martel gives you four seconds of 30 percent increased damage that is nuts so even though this happens after the active skill of Harold right where a lot of people say you want the you want the 30 percent extra damage and then hit him with the active skill um realistically 
the, if if you have a huge rage like uh rage engine you're going to be popping this off a ton and you're going to be popping your your herald skill during that 30 percent increased damage randomly because you get the 20 percent chance and that's going to happen more often than you think that's one in five turns pretty much so you're still going to be hitting them with the skill shot during that four second window so you don't really have to worry about that as far as the order goes now you also get obviously the 30 percent increased counter attack damage which is very punishing if the enemy decides to swarm you you also gain 40 percent of defensive stats here and the March speed on uh on Martel which is very good you also gain the Martel relic which gives you the 25 percent infantry attack that you pretty much lost I mean, obviously the Alex has 30 percent so by replacing with Charles Martel with the relic you're almost getting that attack back plus you get an extra five percent of infantry health as well so again just overall more defensive stats on the Martel as opposed to the Alex and it's something that I was using at the end of KBK because I had to be a little bit more conservative with my troops and I had to account for the fact that I was probably going to get blockaded and swarmed and it was just much better trades than my Alex because Alex just doesn't have any way to really punish the enemy for swarming you down with that Herald now with all of those armies out of the way uh what is next for my account well obviously the next thing is going to be Boudicca okay I have one more skill to put on Boudicca and at reset today I will be spinning the wheel probably for the last time for her and then as much as uh, I don't get here I'll fill it in with universals I clearly have enough universals to go around here who am I gonna pair Boudicca with probably Nebu honestly uh, I'll probably do a Boudicca primary Nebu secondary which gives me a huge question mark as to what do I do with my Isong Ye? That's really what I'm looking at next. What, how am I going to incorporate Isong Ye into my five army murder ball? That is to be determined, honestly. As far as equipment goes, uh, I am going to be focusing a little bit more on my Archer March because of how good Boudicca is. Um, I do have the Dragon's Breath plate chest available now so I can forge this right now which is very good the archer health is going to be very very good to replace the uh, attack chest piece from the revival set so that's the number one thing for me I'm focusing on that and then I also want to replace the archer uh gloves because that will at least give me the two set bonus here from the chest and the gloves and that'll give me uh you know obviously the the revival set is already attack on the gloves so this is basically just giving me more attack and it's going to sort of compensate a little bit for the fact that I'm losing the set bonus from revival set so um really if you're going to replace anything th from the revival set you want to replace it in pairs uh and that's going to be the pair that I chose that I choose to do for now beyond that I do actually have an extra ring of doom that I can um forge this is going to be the next accessory that I forge I'll have two of them at that point which which will be very good and I'll probably put this on uh either my Nevsky or obviously my Boudicca March I think that would just be a great accessory to have I also have another iconic crystal still sitting in my inventory so I will probably wait to use that on my next accessory which is going to be very exciting after I finish Boudicca I'm still going to have pretty much enough sculptures to expertise another legendary and I'm basically just going to sit on those sculptures until we see what the next set of commanders is going to be it's going to be a uh, leadership legendary we already pretty much know that if Lilith is going to continue following the same cycle that they've gone through uh and the last set was decent Honda people like Honda I don't know I don't really love Honda that much to be honest with you but with the power creep in the game I have a, uh, I have a feeling that we're going to see uh at least one of the next legendary commanders be very very good and if that's the case it could prove to be a very good secondary for a commander that I already have could it be something that I throw behind a CPO primary and then have my Guan Yu come back together with my Leonidas that's something that I could do um, but I am waiting to see what the next legendary commanders are going to be before I invest any more sculptures into anybody else and that's pretty much it guys if you have any questions down below I would love to hear from you guys your thoughts and opinions are what matter most to me while you're down there like the video you made it all the way to the end so you might as well drop a thumbs up on it and subscribe to the channel for more rise of kingdoms content with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace